We're here at uh, Mission San Juan in San Antonio, Texas. And as you can see, the field at the mission is a little overrun with weeds. We're starting off with native grasses and flora. We've got some pigweed and a lot of Johnson grass in particular. This is good for prairie, but it's not so good for cultivation. So we're going to start cultivating this land and show that in Texas you can grow your crops without any herbicides or pesticides. All you have to do is use cultivation techniques to kill off this stuff and continually work on it. If you keep the soil moving, the weeds can't establish and you can get your crops growing. With one pass of the cultivator, you can see there's still Johnson grass here and some Bermuda and a little side of Romifolia. However, with this one pass, you can see that a great portion of the weeds have already been killed. This is especially effective in Texas where we have limited rainfall during certain parts of the year. You can bust out these perennial weeds and expose their roots to air, which wipes them out. The idea is to expose the roots, kill the plant rhythms, and start reducing your weed populations. What you'll see happen is you'll go from this lush, hardy, drought-tolerant grass to these bundles of dry debris that will eventually break down and become organic matter. Here we see a field after several passes. This is just with the cultivator. There's been a great reduction in the amount of weeds. One thing that will help you is to go through with the cultivator on one pass, and then on the next pass, you split the previous pass by offsetting the tractor. You can see the evidence of that here, where there's a little bit of furrow on the top of the rows. Now we're seeing the later pass. We're crossing the field to go along the transverse, and that's going to further break this up. After that, most of the perennial weeds should be killed. The next step in this process is building the rows back up, letting it dry out, and waiting for the remnants of the weeds to die. Because cuttings from plants like Bermuda and Johnson grass becomes, become propagules, they can develop into big weedy plants again. You really want to ensure that they dry up completely. By cutting the soil and keeping it moving and not allowing them time to grow roots, you eliminate most of these perennial weeds. Here in Texas we have great difficulty with organics because we have so much weed competition. This is just one way to reduce the weed competition in that initial start of a field. It's currently mid-July here, so this field would be ready in late August or early September to use for, uh, to grow fall crops. The next step after building, up, uh, building back up the rows would be to flood irrigate the field. Let the annual weed seeds germinate and then come through and smash the field again to eliminate those seedlings. We may do one more pre-germination pass, allow those weed seeds to germinate, and then take them out with a light tilling. Then the field will be ready to be planted because we've effectively eliminate, eliminated most of the perennial and annual weeds. This field has been passed vertically and horizontally with the cultivator, and you can see that most of the weeds are gone, over 99%. There's a few left, and since they're perennial weeds, you should go through, kind of do a police call and dig them out. Walk through the field and make sure everything is dead, and anything that's not, go ahead and hoe it out by the root. That'll save you diesel. You don't have to go and run the tractor through the field again just for a few weeds. Just kind of walk around and knock, those, knock out those few survivors, and then start preparing your field for planting.